Hello everyone, and welcome to this mini-lecture on growing forms of popular culture. This is part of a mini-series on what is popular culture, which is part of a course of popular culture in the U.S. So in this mini-lecture, we're just going to take a look at, you know, as popular culture has grown over the last two or three hundred years, what are some of those emerging forms? What are some of those forms that I would really consider game changers, um, that really renegotiate relationships or make people experience new things that they might not have experienced before, uh, that are part and parcel of what we consider popular culture? So. If we look at emerging types of popular culture in the 1800s, uh, there are some really big ones that we should be aware of. Versus newspapers. Now, newspapers again have been around prior to the 1800s, and some of the other things we'll look at we could argue have been around prior to the time we're looking at them, but it's in the 1800s that they really take off. In the, in the uh, 1820s you see the emergence of the penny press, and you see newspapers become widely available to a mass audience unlike previous previously understood dime novels become huge and this is really one of the first times in which people can get a hold of 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 reading material that isn't necessarily expensive you know and this is what's important about when we talk about popular culture is that we're talking about when these technologies or when these things become cheap enough that you know the larger population can afford them and so dime novels were these basically you know cheaply made books that were sometimes you know up to 64 to 100 pages or so that would have either serials in them or would be self-contained novels in themselves it really depended on who was publishing it and whatnot and one of the most famous is of course um, the dime novels by Horatio, Horatio Alger traveling variety shows um, and one of the things we'll talk about in this course is blackface minstrelsy but traveling variety shows became much more prolific or became much more prominent as we got into industrialization and really urbanization in which you could have a show really exposed to many audiences and as we got into faster transportation you could have that traveling show you know hit many different places in a fairly small amount of time um, as opposed to previously when it would take much longer to travel many over the distance uh, throughout the country. Photography was very big. Uh, photography changed a lot of different things. Um, it had a very big impact. This ability to capture a given moment uh, and this certainly played a role in popular culture from you know the idea of taking photos versus taking portraits the idea of photography as entertainment and what that could do and of course it ultimately led to film but photography too um, as a as a mass producible item it soon became possible for people to have pictures of themselves uh, that wasn't accessible or possible in previous generations the rise of college and national sports uh, are also, you know, we see this emer emerging in the 1800s and in how this works or, or how people engage in uh, sports from it being something as a pastime to it becoming something professional, uh, from it becoming something that is done, you know, by in, in unofficial capacities to something that is part and parcel of many major colleges and universities throughout the U.S. The rise of dance halls. Dance halls became this very interesting place of negotiation of male and female relationships that just were not there previously. And these dance halls, because we saw the increase of things like phonographs and the ability to play music, you know, often they would have live bands, but they could also be playing music uh, on things like phonographs and record players changed things. Uh, we we had dance halls occurring in these large urban centers, you know, your New Yorks, your Bostons, your, your uh, Chicago's, and we're dealing with a, a new population, many, many people, male and female, living on their own, unmarried, coming together in dance halls to dance and, of course, negotiate relationships in new and different ways than what we had seen previously. 
As we get into the early 1900s, we see even newer forms or types of popular culture emerge. Uh, we see musical records, right? We see the rise of the phonograph and the relevance that that plays, um, as I mentioned, in the dance halls, but also in how people experience music. You know, today we have the MP3, uh, but you can imagine for somebody who could only see or, you know, would have to be present, physically present to experience music or play music um, is now getting to experience music without there being somebody playing it. Um, and again, that changes our relationship with music. If music no longer needs to be live, if it can be captured like a photo, then more people can access it. Comics. This is, of course, one of my favorite areas of popular culture, and we see comics become extremely popular. Uh, really, you know, it starts in the late 1890s, but really takes off in the 1900s. Uh, and again, this becomes a form in which many people engage with, appreciate, um, and that's adults and children. I mean, we, you know, typically it has been identified as children, but when you look at comic readers, uh, particularly in the first half of the 20th century, there's a lot more adults than uh, most people actually realize. Pulp magazines, again, another area of both with comics and pulp magazines, they were both things that uh, users or readers could have at their home and read at their leisure. Similar to musical records, but musical records would often entail needing, of course, a uh, electric, needing electricity, would be needing the record player, would need all these secondary things. But comic books and pulp magazines, you just need the items to read them and enjoy them. So you could enjoy them at any time you want. You could enjoy them walking down the street. Um, so they were portable. Uh, we can think of them as like, you know, the early 19th century's equivalent of uh, of the cell phone that you could move around with it. It was your entertainment on the go. Film, of course, became huge in the 1900s, um, and we see a whole lot of that, and, and people really in droves going out and enjoying film and finding some value and meaning in that engagement. Um, so this, again, becomes another game changer. You know, we see in the 1930s and 1940s epic levels of attendance at movie theaters that we'll never see again, um, that we will never see the amount of people that went to films in the, th in the 1930s and 1940s. What I mean by that is the percentage of the population. Uh, we'll never see that again because it, it was really dominant in the 1930s and 40s, and it's not now. Um, there's so many other ways of, through technology, to engage in film that many people, there isn't a need to go to the theaters. Of course, radio uh, and the roles in that that played in kind of bringing this this live voice into the household, right? So different from musical records or, or, or audio records, you know, anything that was recorded and that you could play and pause, the radio was live or would could have the potential of being live. You would have people on there doing old time, you know, doing radio shows, uh, you know, whether that's a drama or that's a comedy or a horror show or just people sharing the news. Um, it was a very interesting live event in your household that you were experiencing. And then, of course, television. Um, and television really did prove the game changer of the, the 1900s and shifted so many different things that when television became affordable enough to really get into most people's homes, uh, it changed a lot of things in popular culture, and we still feel the, the effects from that. So those are some of the emerging types of popular culture that we see over the last 200 years, and many of those we'll be exploring in more detail in this course. So thank you very much for watching, and see you in the next lecture.